So at this point, what I've got is a an info button on the home screen. It doesn't go anywhere yet. So that's going to go to a whole new content area as a pop-up. While we're on the line that we just made right now about the pop about the about link, we will add the href. It's going to go eventually to pound about. So we need a section or an aside or something with an idea of about or info or whatever we want to call this. So the person will click on this info button and we'll get a pop-up. That's step one. We need something to click. Step two is a, a section or an aside or something. We're going to do a section in that uh, it's going to be interface D, the, the simple pop-up, header content, no footer, and that it also floats off the top from the, from the page itself, like a real pop-up, like an overlay pop-up. A modal dialog box is the really fancy, nerdy name for that. So let's go all the way to the end of the document where we've got that template. I don't want to retype all of this, so our template can be reused again. I'm going to copy the template and paste it right above itself and change a few things. ID about. So I'll take that section of a template and paste it above itself. This is now start of about. It ends about section. We don't need that footer, so I'll remove the footer itself. We need to change the ID, of course, about. Header text, about. And we'll put some real content in just a moment. So it's a whole new section, data roll page. That's the same as before. So save it and run it. You should then see some result of clicking the info button. And then we'll do a couple more tweaks. Because it won't look fully like a pop-up box yet, even though we we, even though we have the data transition of pop, you see that, but it doesn't feel like a pop-up yet. That's, that's coming up. If I save this, my result is from the info button, I click that, I get an animation of pop. Well, there's no back button, there's no close button, I saw a pop animation, it doesn't look quite right yet, like a pop-up. The last thing that we need for this to really work is we need one more attribute. Section, data roll page, we will need a data dash dialog equals true. That's the shorthand so that it's not a full screen. It's going to be smaller. It has a, a shadow. It overlays on top of what exists and it gets a close button. So with data dialog equals true, we get a pop-up screen based on our based on a regular old section.
Yeah, ID about, if you follow it back to the home screen, that's where we had right there the inf the about button, href about. So this result should be that you click on the info button, you get a pop-up. Drop shadow, close button, the back fades out. Oops, I may be getting the hiccups. I don't I hope I don't have to stand upside down or breathe into a paper bag or something. So uh, here's the about screen the header is there and content, no footer, not necessary, but we could add one if we wanted. We did not have to add a close button. It should add a close button simply by having data dialog true. The background elements fade out and you've got a drop shadow. You close that and it unpops. There's a pop and an unpop. We put a little bit of content in the actual in the actual about. So we'll put in uh, an H2 here. And the we'll continue and add. We'll put a paragraph where we will have an image. Put another paragraph of other text that we'll borrow from the website. You should have an image that we saved from Tuesday in your images folder. Hopefully you've got one of those images of the continuing education logo. So set your source to that image. I have, to, I have to check my folder. I believe I've got a picture for the continuing education logo. in the project folder, in the images folder. In my case, I have a graphic. I have a graphic of the college that is vertical that I want to use. If you don't have that graphic, you can use a different graphic, but I got that off of the website. So my sort my image source is images slash CE underscore do seal underscore vertical underscore bw dot ping. If you don't have that graphic, obviously it will not show up. If you've got your own graphic, you need to put your own, your own icon. On the Z drive, you can look on the class folder with today's date, TMP. And then in the images folder. So when I open the info box, when I open the info box, I get the graphic too large, which I'll fix via CSS a little later. I think if you're maximized, it's still a little too large, but we can fix that through CSS a little later.
this uh, text. I'll take a quick look at the website, the official college's website, and see if I can take um, a sentence or two from the, from the website to fill into that paragraph. So on the college's website, sdce.edu, Maybe right here at the very bottom, mission, San Diego continuing, ed commits to student success, etc. So maybe I'll take that. So now my info screen has more text. Graphic will need to be fixed later. So all of that is the about screen. It's not looking quite right yet, but in my case, my text is below and the picture is above, but the picture is too big. Oh, okay. Yeah, right now the picture is really big. We never specified a size. We will in CSS. Yes? My button's not open.
This All right, everyone, let's go on and let's do uh, a few more things here. Um, I think structure-wise, we're at a good spot. We have some details to fill in, which can be done later. You know, the computer screen, these need to be linked eventually. And the art screen, these are not items. These are going to be art classes. We'll do that later. And then uh, this information, you know, that CSS needs to be fixed. So what I want to do is, is address a couple of the design things via CSS. Like, uh, let's say we're, one of the first things I want to do is regarding this, this calendar. I do want to change those, um, those H tags in the aside. That's going to be via CSS. We need to set ourselves up with a CSS file 
where we're then going to write extensive CSS as time goes on to further define what this should look like. So let's back up to the very top of our document. And we've got on line 8, we've got a link to the jQuery CSS file. We're going to then add our own custom CSS code in a separate CSS file. I'm going to then add a new line after that link still inside the head. Make a new link. rel stylesheet href to something. So we're starting with the basic jQuery mobile CSS, which gives us all our basic styling. Gray background, Arial font, the paddings and the margins, and all of that. Then we're adding to it our own custom code. And notice we're writing it secondly. That's very important. If we wrote our custom code first, and then the jQuery definitions came second, those would take over. Because it does matter the order that these things are in. So we'll set the jQuery basic definitions first, and then we will set our own definitions here. In a new file we can call mystyles.css. Well, that means we need a file in our project called mystyles.css. We're going to create a new file in Notepad. Save what you have here, and then File, New. We will create a new file, and we will save it as mystyles.css. So after you type this link, let's go to File, New, File, Save As. In our project folder, we can get fancy with a folder called Styles if we want. I'll just leave it on the top root folder, that's fine. I'm going to do that on the top root folder. I'm going to save my project, calling it mystyles.css. Make sure that your type is also set to CSS. Over here somewhere, cascade style sheet. So in my project folder, I'm saving as a CSS file, my styles. I already have the, the jQuery mobile styles. I'll save that. So in my project folder, uh, these are the files that were there, and now I've got a my style CSS and a blank document, which will only have CSS. And then I've got my index file tab, and my style style file right there. This is CSS, so we can use this style of comments in a CSS file. We're in a CSS file. To remind you, we're not going to use the comment code in the HTML file. The angle bracket thing doesn't work anymore. That's an HTML comment. We're not using that. We're using the slash asterisk the first thing that I want to do is target the heading 1 that is not looking very good in the, in the aside. So that means in the aside tag space we will find a heading 1 tag. So remember this syntax. Find an element, the aside. Inside of that element, we have another element, h1. And it's just something that you have to memorize. Having a space basically means the thing on the right will be inside of the thing on the left. If we wanted to go really, really deep in, you know, we keep adding to it. Maybe we had, I don't know, an m tag for some reason. We have an m tag marking the h1 inside of the aside. It's too deep at this point. But here we're saying wherever there's an aside, h1, change it like this. And this should work. It's pretty universal. Because if we decide to use asides anywhere else, we have the same issue. The h1 is too small. So this targets any h1 in an aside. And very simply, what we'll do here is just say a font dash size, bring it up to 2m. text the line center. 
if we want. This will align the text, this hopefully will align the text into the center of that aside. I'm going to make a comment. We targeted any H1 inside of an aside. We have to remember now, save it and run it, but you have to run your index file, not the CSS file. If you run while you're viewing the CSS file, the browser will just show you code. And also, because we're working with more than one file, you, may, you, you should remember to also save your other files. I saved my CSS file. My index is not saved. A quick way to save everything, we have save all right there. So save all, and then run your index file. In my art screen, in my calendar screen, there it is. Big and bold, two M's centered. The H1 was targeted in the aside. Syntax, remember, curly braces opening and closing. So the aside opens up, and then um, if we were actually running this on a real uh, device, when that, when that side panel opens up, we can then actually swipe it over to close it. I'm not on a real device, and I didn't really think about that, to swipe it over. But if I'm on a real device, I probably have the idea to swipe it to close it. If I'm not using it on a, on a device, or if a person never thinks about swiping to close, because you know not everyone has the same level of computer experience as you, Right now, some people see this and say, how do I get out of this? How do I close it? Some of us will know to swipe and close. Some of us will be confused. So if we add an extra obvious <coughs> close button, this will help the people that don't figure out that you can swipe to close. Some people might figure out if you click outside of the uh, sidebar, it closes it. But it won't, it won't hurt to have a close button visible on screen for people that need it, and for other people they can just swipe and it's done. So redundancy in a user interface sometimes is good, sometimes it's okay to have people do the same thing more than one way. So what we'll do is this, this needs to be back in the HTML file actually. In the HTML file we're, we'll, put, we'll put a close button. Let's go back to our aside in the HTML file. And then in the aside we will put a close button. So at about line 55 or so, this is 52, this is where we start the section, the aside panel. Okay, so we're going to add a close button here. Let's add it before the H1 called close. It needs an A tag. It's going to be a close button. href will go back to pound about, or art. When we click the close button, close this panel, and take us back to the art section. I want it to look like a button. Data roll equals button. I want an icon here, data-icon. We've got a couple of icons built into jQuery Mobile that give you the idea of closing something, like some arrows. We've also got a little X to close, but uh, it's called delete. 
doesn't quite make sense, but the delete icon gives you the little X so that you can close the panel. Here's a new thing, data-rel, set that to close. The relationship of this button is to close itself to take you back to the art screen. Data-rel, not data-roll, data-rel, relationship, close. Save it and run it. Open the panel. Now you'll see an obvious button to close. If people need that obvious button, it's there. If people swipe over, that works too. It's a little too obvious. I don't want to show the word close. If only there were a way to only show an icon and not text. Data dash icon. Data dash icon pos equals no text. If only there was a way to move that icon to the right. Well, that's the CSS, which we'll do in a moment. But this creates an icon on the left with a little X, with no text. Its relationship is, or its meaning is to close. And then by a CSS, in just one moment, we will align it to the right. check my result. I go to the art screen, I open the calendar, there's an obvious little X there, I close it, it closes. I want to move that X to the right, we'll do that in just one moment. Yes? So on the aside, yeah, the aside doesn't have a default, so we created one. And what about the a row back or something like that on the side. If we want an arrow back, then we just choose a different icon here. I chose a delete icon and you can put, you know, arrow dash r. Now this is the funny thing, some people think a right arrow, some people think a left arrow. Because perception wise, which which arrow should it be? Watch this. If I open up if I do arrow r. No, 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 no. So does that mean move the arrow to the left, move it to the move the panel to the left, swipe left, swipe right? <laughs> so uh, arrows at this point, and if I put arrow L, what is what is the meaning of, of arrow L? Does it make it feel like what do I do here? Is that gonna close it? Is it gonna move it? Am I gonna go back? So the X feels to close even though it's called delete, but there's no wrong answer. We can also do the other ones, which is caret, C-R-A-T, caret. That one does that. So when we move this to the right side, it might make more sense that, oh, that's going to close this panel. But right now, it, any icon will, be, will work. To move it to the right side, whatever that icon is, this is CSS. And this is the one that, honestly, this is one of the ones sort of like, just trust me on this, because it won't make sense. But let's write it, and then I'll explain it. We're targeting another thing that's inside of the aside. So again, in the CSS file, aside, something, float, write. So the something, that icon, I want it to be to the right side. The default is to the left. The something is UI da is dot UI dash BTN. These are the ones basically about trust me. Because whenever we do anything data roll equals button internally on the raw code that element has class equals UI dash button. Doing a data role equals button is shorthand, but behind the scenes it's class equals UI button. And how do I know that? Well, I read the documentation at jQueryMobile.com. And so this is the way to target a button. We can't 
directly like this do a side data role equals button? We can do that if we kind of write it more complexly. But if we know that behind the scenes data role equals button is UI dash button class UI dash button, this works. So we can write the comment targeted a button a jQuery mobile button in an aside via its built-in class UI-VTN. The, the jQuery mobile library references their buttons in their CSS file as a class of UI-Button, BTN. So save and run that. This will only target buttons in an aside. Things that have a data role of button. We have one thing, that close button. If you save and run your index file, that should move your icon to the, to the right. on the right. <laughs> Let's uh, target some of our some of our pictures on my on my home screen. I have a picture on the art and so forth. So what I can do is um, target these pictures. The best way to do this is by using classes. We have an image tag, but we have different kinds of images in different screens. We have, for example, an image right here. I want to make that image behave differently than these images here. So we should attach classes to the images we want to target. My idea is I want to put rounded corners on this image, but I don't want rounded corners you know, on this image. I want to shrink that image as well. So we can write the rule first and then, and then attach the class to the element, or we can attach the element, attach the class to the element first and then write the rule, either or. But since I'm already in the CSS file, maybe we can write it first. The hard part is uh, maybe choosing a name for it, a name that makes sense. So let's say this is going to be some sort of class that will give me rounded corners to an image. So dot, because it's a class. And we can call this IMG round. So at a glance, it's supposed to tell me this is supposed to be attached to an image, and the purpose is to round it. I can make it a longer name to be more explicit, but if it's a longer name, I have to then type a longer name later. Anyone remember the code to make the rounded corners on things? Order, Order dash radius, yes. And how do we further fill that in? Percentage. Pixels, percentage, any values. Uh, we'll do four at once. Um, let's say, I don't know, ten percent. So here we're saying certain images will have a border radius of ten percent. We then need to apply this class to said certain images. So save your CSS file. Let's go back to the index file. And let's go find copies of those, or let's find instances of those pictures and add a class equals image round without the dot. So back on the index file. Remember what you can do in Notepad if you right click a tab 
and select move to other view, you can see your CSS and your HTML at once. If you right click a tab, move to other view. So we need to find in the home screen In my case, line 26, I've got my image, image is welcome, class or ID as the last attribute, image round, without the dot. I want to add that class to the image that I have in the art screen and in the computer screen, so that all three of them get that roundness. So I'll go to the art screen and I see my art image. I'll add that same class, exactly the same. Because it's a class, I can reuse it. If it were an ID, I could not reuse it. And then over to the computer's screen, same thing. So I did a copy and paste, assuming it worked. And then I'm copying and pasting it to my other two pictures in the art screen and in the computer's screen. And the result is round, round, round. Let's deal with the picture inside of the inside of the about screen. I'm already in the HTML file, so again, either or, either set your class and then define it in the CSS file, or write your CSS class and then apply it in the HTML. I'm already in the HTML file, so I'm going to go find where that picture is at in the About page, the About screen. And so I see in the About section, there's a link to my picture, it's, a, it's too large. Once we attach a class to it, then we will be able to rein it in via CSS. The image is our seed, and we'll add a class attribute. We will call this image img resize. So this has a class. We then switch over to the CSS file, dot image resize, and then we'll deal with resizing that image. Since it's a class, I may want to use it more than once. So if here I set a width and a height exactly for that image, it really only applies to that image. I might as well have made it an ID. This resizer, I kind of want to think about it more as a generic kind of resizing class to fit it within any parent element. So percentages would work better 
than actual pixel values. So if we do a width, let's start with maybe 75%. Wherever I use this image resize class upon an image, technically any element besides an image also, it will resize itself to be 75% of the parent element. I can set a width and not a height. And the cool thing is that the browser will automatically set a height in proportion. So I don't know really maybe what kind of height to set. I don't need to. If I set one, the other one changes in proportion. So oftentimes we think in the width. What, how wide should it be? Let's say 75%. The height, it'll figure it out. So save your CSS, save your index. When I run my index and check the result, it's not so big anymore. I could further write more code to center it, or I could write it to be 100% so that it takes up some amount of space. Uh, let's see about centering it. One way to center it is If we wanted to center it, we should, we sh it should be inside of an element. Is it inside of an element? If it's in a paragraph. It might be better to attach the class to the, to the P instead of the image. Let me just try one thing here. Text align, even though it's not text. Center, I don't believe that will center it until we set it class to the parent element. But then the width of that doesn't change. So there's a piece in a piece, okay? And so there will be two classes. We do pound about p. That'll affect the other p right there. Image. Hmm, okay, let me try this. We're resizing the image, and then I'm trying uh, pound about, so elements inside of the about, and then um, paragraphs. centered it, and it also centered the text there, which I may not want, but that might be a way to do it. So you see uh, what I did here? I'm saying in our section of about, in, in the idea of about paragraph, because this image is inside of a paragraph. Inside of the paragraph, I want to align that stuff to the center, so it aligned my image to the center. It also aligned the paragraph of text below it. I may or may not want that. Maybe it looks okay in a small kind of box. If I didn't want that, I'd have to further figure out different CSS to really target that. The idea is that I need to align with the P tag. Yes? I need to display block and mark them out to the center of the picture. On which one? The image resize? Or the yeah, on the image resize. I just will go down to WP to send the image. Okay, let's give that a try. How does that affect the width, however? Does it obey the width? It's coming with the width, which says on the example it's a 40% but it's going to keep on the side. So it was display block and what else? And, uh, oh, and then the margin, margin auto. auto. Yeah. yeah. This is that. Could be another way. 
and then the text stays to the left. So see two ways to do it, so you guys can choose which way you like. If we do image resize, if we only want one CSS class, we could do this. We set a width, display, block, margin auto often uh, needs display block. Remember margins, we have a way to center something left and right automatically, because margin is top, right, bottom, left, and we have margin auto. That should then only target this one picture where we added the class. If we wanted the picture and the text aligned, well, here's another way. Target, target the P's in the section. We commented that out. I could then further comment. A way to center align all p p's in the about section. Maybe a comment for this one because it's not so obvious what it does. <clears throat> Targets an image class to resize it and center it on screen. Right now that graphic, uh, we took it from the website and it's visible on the screen, it looks nice, but I would like it, maybe I would like it defined, I would like a border around it if I want, it, it floats there kind of nice, but if I further wanted a little graphical style, I could put a border around that graphic, so just that's adding a little bit more to that. now. Now we no longer sort of, it's not quite just resizing it. This is al always the problem with naming these things. Well, one is figuring out what to write, and the other is naming these things, because originally I had the idea just to resize it. But then I get the idea, what about if we use that same tag, that same class, to center it? And now I want to use that same class to add a border. So I'm kind of expanding the purpose of this class. Uh, the browser, the app, won't care. But you yourself, when you look at your own code, image resize, it's no longer quite the right name. But just to kind of play with this, if we put a border, one pixel, single, or solid, um, gray. That'll add a simple one pixel solid gray line around our graphic, or any graphic we attach the image resize class to. Notice the spaces here, the syntax is the first value is the thickness of the line, space, the next one is what kind of line, they're solid and dashed and dotted and other ones, and then space a color. I'm just using a simple named color, but I can have a hex color or RGB color or even a transparent color. And so that result there is I get a, I get a border around it. If the border is too tight, too close to the graphic, well I can play with padding to put that out a little bit. Adding 1M, maybe. So padding is the inner element. Border <coughs> basically fits like this. There's the border element. Inside is padding. Outside is margin. I just happened to write it that way. But that's the space outside of the border, the space inside. 1M gives you a little bit of breathing room. So now that graphic is a little bit smaller, nicer to look at, 
border around it. <coughs> it's very subtle and it doesn't quite matter here, but it'll be very obvious once we get to the part about styling our graphics, styling our design. We're using the basic default jQuery mobile gray tones, but if we had our design with any other styles, and we can do that very quickly, uh, data theme, you don't have to do this, but if you do data theme B, it gives us a different kind of style, changes color, and we're going to see that some of these colors don't, um, don't quite uh, work so well. What I'm getting at is that behind this, this graphic, it's actually transparent. If I go through the effort of changing the background color of the dialog box from a gray to a red, the red is going to show through this transparent graphic. If I go with a dark, a cool dark color, the dark color is going to go here and it's going to have dark text on a dark background. Hard to read. If only there was a way for me to put a color inside of this box. If we go to the CSS, image resize, again, it's completely lost its meaning. It's not just resizing anymore. Background color, background dash color just to make it obvious, pink. If I put some color there, this is going to show up inside of the box, behind the graphic. And the point of that is the graphic is transparent. Not obvious, not important now when I've got a gray background, but once we put real colors in our app, it will be obvious that that was a transparent graphic. Padding could be pixels or percentages, and there's a special value of auto, which it will automatically choose the amount of space to put between all four sides of the element. On padding, uh, there might be a padding auto. I don't, I don't think I see it that often. We usually put some sort of value, either ends or pixels, to define it. But this is kind of a trick that's been figured out. You put margin auto that basically centers an element. We can uh, to put more than one class. You know, if we have class image imagery size, we would simply do space class two. So in the definition in the HTML, we can add more than one class by adding spaces. Sometimes it's as easy as that. Sometimes not. It just depends on different factors. I would need to make a new class by itself, dot class2, because you're combining both of the classes. You would, you would not put, in that kind of case, I wouldn't exactly put, uh, you know, image round, dot image round. It would be two separate classes. Depending on what you're trying to do, it's, it might be a bigger answer than what, than what you're asking. Uh, but this is how you add two classes to one HTML element. And how to add another class with just name class 2? Yes. Dot class 2. So we uh, kind of style with CSS a little bit of things. We'll definitely alter more things, such as the color of the project and all of that. But I've changed my graphics a little bit. Change that. There's still plenty more that we're going to do via CSS, but let's take one more break. And then uh, when we come back, the last thing that we'll do is uh, we'll look at uh, changing our fonts a little bit. We looked at the Google fonts last month. 
but that only works if you have an internet connection. We're going to work with uh, offline fonts. It's about 8.30. Took a short break, just until 8.35, and then we'll come back and add fonts.